Welcome back to the shed slash workshop transformation. In the last episode, we ripped my roof off. We laid some insulation down. We also insulated all of the walls as well as some dry sheeting. In this episode, we are finishing everything off and putting it all back together, turning this into my dream shed slash workshop. Proudly supported by Superior Engineering, Diesel Conversions Australia, and in part by. So today we've got plenty to do. We are hopefully gonna get this all painted up. I've got to seal some more stuff up. I've got some more insulation to put up. I've got to frame the windows, frame the doors. I've got a list of stuff that needs to get done. But I am very excited to uh, crack on with this. So you can see here, I've got uh, a little paint up on the wall. Now, I really like the gray. I was originally gonna do white just to make this place feel a little bit bigger, but uh, my dad actually had some gray left over from doing his place down here. There's four different types of grays. I mixed three of them together, which I think is gonna be enough paint. It's like just on, I think 20 liters there. So I mixed three different grays together and that is how I got this gray. I think that looks pretty nice on there. It's just like a nice sort of neutral gray. Originally, I was gonna leave that wall this color um, and not paint it at all. But I think that I'm actually just gonna do the whole shed in that gray. That is pretty much just due to the fact that I don't want two colors, you know, sort of clashing around and uh, doing weird stuff. The red stripe that you can see here is because I was going to do a red stripe right around the shed. I think it would look pretty cool. It is a lot of extra work and this wall isn't exactly flat. They've kind of got like a texture to them. You can see that sort of crisscross pattern there. That's because these sheets are the wrong way around. They're meant to be sort of the other way. That's not necessarily a bad thing. I kind of like the texture, but if I was to do this red here and I taped, there's a good chance that's gonna bleed through the tape and it could turn out to be a bit of a headache. So I might actually just leave that for now. Kind of defeats the purpose of uh, buying this James Hardy board because I did want to leave it that sort of dark color, but we can always go ahead in the future and do a feature wall or something. I'm not really too sure. It is just a workshop, so I don't want to get too carried away. We've got a few more little gaps like that one up there to fill and just a few little bits and pieces. I also want to frame around some of this stuff that we've cut out and also do a bit of an architrave. So I've got this sort of timber laying around the house here from another project, but I think if I screw that bit in there and then screw that bit like that. You can kind of see we're making a little bit of an architrave there. It's not the best work, but uh, that is some timber that I've literally just got laying around. Sorry, diesel. So it would be nice to use that. We've also got the uh, two windows over here that need an architrave as well. So I did just go and buy some wood. It's not gonna be the best job. Like I said, not a builder, but uh, just wanna make this a little bit neater. It definitely feels a lot bigger in here. I don't know if you guys are getting that vibe too just off the camera, but you can kind of see the height of the walls now where before it kind of felt a little bit closed in, a little bit, you know, cluttered. I guess that might be because everything's in the middle, nothing's in its place yet, but feels good so far. The other thing I need to do pretty well straight away so it can dry is uh, fill in these cracks where the uh, so-called forklift damaged it. But yeah, there's only a few of them, so I've got to fill them in. Also, I need to like spray foam in those joints there, then cut that flush so I can uh, paint that. There is a fair bit of work to get done today, but uh, if you missed the first episode, I suggest you go and watch that first before we continue on today. Uh, so you can see the full effect of the shed because you know this is looking pretty good right now compared to what it was. I've started writing a list here too of uh, stuff to do, and this is not limited to what we have to get done. I swear this list is gonna grow. I've got to finish screwing all the boards. I haven't done the middle run yet. So finish screwing the boards, spray foam all the gaps, no gaps, all these joins, cause they're just like a butt join. There's nothing behind that. Frame the windows, insulate the top triangle. That is uh, that triangle up there. There's no insulation above that roller door yet. We've got to paint, we've got to seal the doors, which means uh, we do need to seal around this door here because you can see there's like a gap up there and also above the roller door, I need to seal that and uh, seal the bottom. So that is kind of like a waterproofing thing. You kind of just run some Sikaflex or silicon right along the bottom there so that if you do spill water, oil or anything like that, it's not gonna soak up into the board. So there's a starting list. There's probably gonna be more than that. But uh, what I'm gonna start with is the spray foam so that that can start drying so I can cut it down after. 
then I'll go through and start screwing everything off. Then we can make the architraves. I'm really excited actually to make those architraves. Yeah, lots of work. Let's start on uh, the spray foam. So one thing I've learned with building is that it takes way longer than working on cars. Things like sealing up the shed, they just take so much time. There's so many like nooks and crannies, but it's not that expensive to do. And at the end of it, it's all gonna be worth it when it's nice and smooth. So I'm gonna go ahead, fill all of the cracks, joints, anywhere that I've cut, you know, use the spray foam in any of the holes where the power is coming through. And it's just gonna add that little extra bit of tidiness to this workspace. Now I have been running these Roby OnePlus battery tools for a while now and the collection certainly has grown. You can see on top of my toolbox, I'm slowly but surely running out of space and I know that at home, a lot of you guys would be the same, but luckily Roby has the solution for us this Christmas. Right, now here we have the Roby Link Wall Kit. Now this is gonna allow us to mount everything up on the wall. It's gonna make things super tidy. Got the link all screwed up on the wall. It is now time to put the hooks up so we can hang all of our tools. Right, and we are now officially finished on the Ryobi OnePlus wall. And I think that that is really well organized and it's ready to go for the next project. Everything that you've seen today is available through Bunnings online in store or through Click and Collect. So what are you waiting for? Go and get someone that perfect present this year. Right, so that is all the joints all done. You can see I'm just waiting on some plaster to dry. This stuff up here is gonna take probably till tomorrow to dry. And obviously I might hit it with another little slather tonight and uh, get that nice and flat. Most of the joints, I just use no more gaps. The ones that were really big, like the ones up there, I just use plaster in those holes, in those sheets, I just use plaster as well. So I wanna do these uh, window frames and the architrave around the door now. I'm gonna be doing it a little bit different to how normal people do it, I guess, but uh, I just went to Bunnings last night, got some timber, and I'm gonna chop that up, screw it onto here. It's gonna look a lot better than just having this little cutout here. <laughs> Cut these little trim pieces and now that this is overhanging 20 mil we're just going to screw this piece of board under it and that is going to finish off the frame i actually completely forgot that i had this nail gun and i think it is going to hold this up and look a lot better that is much better looks a lot better with a nail gun 
rather than having those screws. So that's the first one done. Stoked with that. Normally you would have uh, this board a little bit shorter and this board kind of comes up and covers that seam, but I think that still looks fine. And uh, that's all I could get at Bunnings anyway at the time. So yeah, move on to the next one. Did run out of this uh, trimming timber, but I did have some more of that left over. So that has worked out pretty good anyway. It's amazing what a bit of architrave does. That just looked like a really raw uh, cut hole before, but now it looks like a finished off product, which is mint. So now it's time to do this door. Once again, I'm gonna frame on the inside, then put a lap and cap on the outside, and we will have a nice looking door. See how much raw that looks in comparison that so much better so i've got my subboard here i've just quickly cut some of this timber again so i can just frame just ever so slightly around it. I can't nail this top one on because there's wires behind it. And I know that. So, a bit of silicon on that one. Should hold it fine. Right, got the door all framed up. You can see that looks pretty nice. It's just timber that I had laying around, so it's good to finally use that. But yeah, that is the door framed and then also this little power box got framed up. I've also tried to make it so when the Sparky comes out, he can take the face of that off. So it's not exactly perfect. It would be a little bit nicer if it went a little bit closer, but then you wouldn't be able to get that box off. So how are we looking on our list? We've got just about most of it done. I think the only major thing left is that triangle up there. Then we can paint it. We've screwed everything off. We've foamed it with no gaps. We've framed the window. We haven't sealed the doors because I'm going to do that after I paint. But all we need to do now is insulate the top and paint. Kind of been tossing up what to do up there. Do I just put insulation up, silver side out so I don't have to sheet it? Or do I just go ahead and sheet it? I do have enough sheets to get it done rather than them go to waste. I figure I probably should just go ahead and do it. After this, I have no use for cement sheeting. So I may as well go ahead and cut two uh, triangle bits just like we did up that side. Then we can go ahead, insulate that and uh, sheet it. And then we'll be ready to come in tomorrow and smash it with some paint. I'm still really undecided on whether to just go one solid gray color and then maybe dress it up with some red here and there because red is my favorite color or uh, do the red stripe like I was originally thinking. The other thing is this Roby board is gonna go up on the wall there somewhere. And I might just do like a triangle or a diamond out of red up in the corner, I don't know, maybe an RL for Rome life up in the corner. There's just so many possibilities when you're the painter and you've got a tin of red paint. Yeah, making pretty good progress. It's been all day sealing this shed up. There's a heck of a lot of uh, little joints and stuff that we've done, but the last bit is that top corner. So I'm just gonna go ahead and smash that out. Right, today is paint day and that is a very exciting thing. So far, we've spent about six days on this, so I can't wait to get all of this in paint and finally move back into the shed. This mess behind me is uh, getting very frustrating. Yeah, we are ready for paint. You guys just seen that uh, I finished that triangle bit up there. I've gone ahead this morning and filled all the cracks up the top with the spray foam, the same as what we've done with that other top section. I'm just about ready to mix up some paint behind me, but uh, 
we need to go ahead and mask up because we are using a paint machine. I've borrowed this Graco spray gun from work and it's gonna put on the paint a lot faster than what I can roll it. And if I mask, and if I mask good enough, we're not gonna to need to do too much cutting in. I think I will need to cut in just around the plugs of the lights, probably just up by the tin foil there. I don't wanna spray onto the tin foil. But uh, other than that, I'm pretty certain I can go ahead and just mask everything up. Now, like I said, we are going this gray color and I do need to mix it up. I've got three tins, they're all different grays, but uh, we're gonna mix it up. That's kind of the final color that it'll be. And what I'm gonna do is just spray the whole shed, the one color. And if I like it, we're probably gonna stop there. If I feel like it needs that red stripe, then I will put the red stripe in, but it is a lot more extra work. So I think at the moment, I'm just gonna spray everything gray and just see how it feels. It really is gonna look awesome once it's all painted up. I'm gonna start masking. I'm using this plastic sheet with the masking tape attached. You can get this stuff at Bunnings. I use this stuff all the time. It just saves a lot of work because it's already got the plastic attached. Right, it's finally time to mix some paint. Like I said, I've got three different tins here. My dad actually had these all left over. So a freebie's a freebie, and that is a good thing in my book. So tip them all into the same thing. I really don't even know if all these paints are compatible. I did mix up three of them the other day and painted it on that wall, it seemed to dry, but we're just uh, gonna risk it for the biscuit. Right, the paint is all mixed up. You can see it's just a nice, basic, light gray. Now, what I need to do is I need to go ahead and do some sort of cutting in up there. The other thing I'm considering doing is possibly just cutting in that top section there so I don't paint the tin foil up there. And then up where the roller door, I need to go around there. Painting is the best bit. It's the exciting part. So I'm gonna start getting some color up on some walls and then we will bust out the paint gun. Right, as you can see, I have started the cutting in. I just went to set up the paint gun and we've got a problem. I can't actually get this hose connected to the paint machine because this fitting in my hand is wrong. I don't know what size this hose is, but this is BSP and it just will not connect, which leaves me with two options. I can cut in and then just roll it on. It's probably not a bad option. Probably take you know the rest of the day to do or I've got a little tiny sprayer inside that's like one of those little portable uh, mini pot ones. So I might go get that mini sprayer. I'll see how it goes. It's not the best. It does suck because I was excited to use that and uh, it would have made this a breeze, but you got to work with what you got. I've had this little Wagner sprayer for a while now and whether I didn't clean it out properly last time, I'm not sure, but it was spraying very intermittently I did manage to get the whole back wall sort of done uh, and then it just completely stopped working. I tried for a couple of hours to fix it and it just didn't work. So it was out with the paintbrush to cut in and then we just gonna roll the rest of the paint on. Right, it is now the next weekend, so welcome back to my fully painted shed. That took basically the whole day just to get two coats on this stuff. This Easy Lab board wasn't too bad, but uh, the cement sheeting just really soaked the paint up. So, you know, I was not expecting it to take as long as it did. Obviously, I had dramas with all my paint machines and stuff, so just had to roll it on, but at least it is done now. I haven't really decided completely if I wanna do the red stripe yet. I think it would look really cool, but I'm just not sure about it because it is a lot of extra work. The other downside is that uh, I did mix up three random paint tins with random amounts. So this color is pretty well 
not creatable again. So if I did stuff it up, I can't just go ahead and go down to Bunnings and you know buy this gray off the shelf and just do a touch up job. So I think what we're gonna do is just leave it as it is for now, put everything back and take a look at everything back into position. Cause once stuff is in, it's not gonna look as bad um, and as bland as it does now. If you look here, I've got this uh, plastic mesh sort of stuff that was underneath the first steel beam. So what I've done is sat all the sheets on top of that. So I will be just cutting this off and then we will run a big bead of Sikaflex right along the ground and on the wall. And that is so that if I do hose out, it's completely waterproof. There's no chance of water getting up under the wall or any of the uh, sheets soaking it up. In saying that, these sheets are waterproof, which is why I went cement sheeting. There's a few comments in the last video of uh, why I went this over drywall. If you do drywall in a shed and you do hose out or anything like that or get water on it, it's very susceptible. It soaks the water up and uh, it's not a good time replacing drywall. Also, these are a lot tougher boards. You can put a lot more weight on them. You can screw into them, stuff like that. So there's a lot of benefits to going this wall over the drywall, but uh, I still wanna do my own waterproofing down the bottom just to make it a little bit more watertight. I also really wanna streamline my uh, metalwork and fabrication work area. You can see I've got this uh, little bench grinder mounted on that stand. I might even move that or uh, potentially bring all my metalwork stuff over here so we can just have like a metalwork corner. I had the drill press on a stand, but uh, then I took it off and I haven't used the drill press since because it's just been too hard to get to. But I'd really like to maybe get that stand out, paint it up and put it in a corner somewhere so we can start using the drill press again. Yeah, today is move-in day and I am excited about that. So I'm gonna start sealing up the bottom so I can move in. I wouldn't say that this step is extremely necessary, but God, for the price of three tubes of roofing gutter silicon, I can seal the whole bottom of the shed and I don't have to worry about spilling water, spilling oil, and I can completely hose the shed out and not stress about that water going in behind the boards and rusting out my frame. Right, now I didn't do the best job of that, but I did use some soapy water just to help uh, smear it in. But as you can see, there is a nice bead of silicon right around the floor. So now if we wash out or even let's say we spill um, 10 liters of oil or something and it goes up towards the wall, it's not gonna get under the wall. It's not gonna soak up into the boards and it's just kind of like waterproofing your own shed. What I wanna do is just get everything back into the corners. Like there's obviously so much stuff sitting on top of these benches, but I want to push them back, leave all the stuff on there for now. And uh, I did go and buy a big sort of industrial uh, shelving rack this morning. That is going to go over in this corner somewhere. And then I've also bought a heap of these plastic tubs here. So I'm hoping that a lot of the little miscellaneous stuff that I've just had tucked into corners, we can really organize it into these tubs, label them, and then put them up on the shelf. Shelving is something that I've wanted to do for a very long time and uh, have everything organized. I'm hoping that we can have like a box for wires, a box for fittings, and uh, yeah, just really streamline the process of uh, storing stuff and then trying to find it later on, which is the hard part. But we have lots of uh, sorting out to do. So I'm just gonna go ahead and start getting everything back into position. I'm gonna wait to mount the aircon until I have everything sort of where it needs to go so I can decide where the aircon's gonna go up on the wall because I don't want the uh, lid of the toolbox or anything like that to get in the way of it. So I think I'm ready to finally start moving back in. Honestly, this was probably the hardest part about doing this whole shed transformation. Just trying to find a new place for everything while also organizing everything at the same time. So I'm just trying to like work out the best spot to put benches, shelves, tools, where I wanna be working in the future. I have changed this shed around a few times and if you followed along, you've probably seen that before. But I really want this to kind of cement 
the uh, foundation of the shed. I want this to be the sort of final draft of this building. These industrial shelves you can find really cheap and I really think this is going to help with organizing all of my parts and miscellaneous stuff into containers and then we can keep the stuff organized moving forward on the channel. All right, we are finally almost finished, uh, but it has been a couple of days since I last filmed. It took me two full days to organize all the stuff I have in here. I've also got a full trailer load of stuff ready to go to the tip. It just took a long time to kind of figure out where I wanted everything. Um, obviously, most things are kind of back in the original spot, but um, I've definitely changed a few things around, which I'll run through in a sec. But guys, this is so much better. I was in here all day Saturday, all day Sunday, wasn't even breaking a sweat pretty much. That's thanks to the insulation. Some people might think that this is a bit of a waste of time for a workshop, but uh, I love this sort of stuff. I think it's so sick to just have an awesome shed and it's been a dream of mine since I was a little kid. So, you know, to finally see everything how I sort of envisioned it when I was a kid. I mean, I didn't envision it perfectly, obviously, but uh, I've always just wanted my own space to build cars. And I honestly wouldn't be doing this stuff if it wasn't for you guys at home. So I really appreciate you all watching and uh, following along. It just allows me to do this at home and uh, I really appreciate it. So thank you. And yeah, let's have a look around this shed and uh, I'll show you guys what I've been up to. Now over in this first corner, like I said, we're not gonna be using this roller door here anymore. It's just gonna allow me to have that little bit more floor space, which we really need. I mean, we are jam packed up here already. So I've got the welding table there. Like I said, it's on wheels. So if I do potentially need to open this door, I can just wheel that out the way. Same with the welder. None of this is permanent yet. I'm actually thinking about chopping that table down and uh, potentially just having a smaller table because it is quite, a big table to have in a shed here. So I'm not really too sure about that yet, but for now it's gonna stay there. Our new racking is up and that has allowed us to do a lot more storage. And uh, I'm really loving that rack. I wish I'd done it earlier. The tubs are kind of organized. We've got um, like all our steel and whatnot. So tube steel, uh, this one is like square tube. Then we've got flat stock and just off cuts. Then we've got aluminium here with the exception of one piece of steel pipe. In this container, it's like miscellaneous stuff. We've got wires, solenoids, relays, and stuff like that. Uh, this, I can't remember what that is. That is hoses. So you can see, you know, it just allows me to put everything into a uh, spot where it belongs. Now, I definitely do need more storage because you can see that some of my like specialized tools are just sitting in a corner. So I'm gonna be organizing that very soon and I've got something on the way for that. Up the top, I've got stuff that I need to get done um, and some of the GQ stuff I've pulled off is up there as well. So eventually what we'll be doing is um, having a space where if I strip down a car, I can put everything and uh, keep it really well organized. But for now, this will do. It's definitely a lot better than what we've had previously. Um, chemical cabinet right next to it hasn't really changed too much. I've organized it just a little bit more, but uh, yeah, if you want to look in there, that's what's going on in there. I'm really loving this area here. I haven't had the drill press working or plugged in for a long time now, and I'm excited to have it back, and especially next to me Poppy's vice here that he gave me, so I'm really stoked to have that set up with the drill press and the bench grinder. Now, up above that, we've got one of Roby's link wall kits, and I've just popped some miscellaneous drill bits that are still nice and sharp and some WD-40 so that when I use the drill press, I can just chuck them into the drill press and uh, drill away. Got the safety gear right next to it. I find that if it's hung up, I am more prone to use it. 
and I've really been trying to be on that safety grind lately. Finally have a spot for me dolly. I haven't had a spot for that ever since um, I've bought it, but it's gonna live up there for now and I love it. I couldn't really find a good spot for the uh, jack and the jack stand. So for now, they're gonna be there. They'll probably get covered in metal dust, so not ideal. Underneath there, I've got clamps and whatnot to suit the drill press. Now, this is my big corner bench that I had made and I absolutely love having a corner bench. It's so much more productive than just like a single bench like over there. But underneath, got the drop saw. Once again, sticking with the metalwork theme here. Um, we've got the TIG welder over there. I did have the TIG welder moved over to the middle a little bit, but I just found that when I was cutting and grinding on the uh, vice there, all the metal was getting caught into the uh, machine there. So not ideal. So I decided to just have the uh, drop saw under there. That's just so uh, none of the metal gets anywhere that it doesn't need to be. But this corner is really exciting for me. Right here, we've got our TIG rods. No, I can't TIG yet, but it's something that I really, really want to um, hunker down and practice on. I've got a big bottle of gas and everything ready to go. I just need the seat time. Um, up here is going to be my TIG welding and just welding storage. So we're gonna have like TIG welding, MIG welding, um, I don't know, brazing, I don't really know yet, but we'll eventually fill that up. And then we've just got a nice little shelf. That was my timber shelf. I just sprayed it black because the timber was starting to go a bit funky. Up there is the coal transformation. Love that photo, that was a present for my birthday. Um, I actually wanna get more of them and start hanging them up around the shop. I think that would be really cool. Now, I'm still going to be tinting this, uh, but at the moment, we've got the whiteboard. We've got a funny car connecting rod that thing's done 10 passes at uh, 13,000 horsepower. So I'd snag that one up, I love it. Um, hung the lights back on the wall, and up there we've got our eight meter hose. It's just a cheapie, but I can just reach that and pull it down. And we've got air on this side of the shop where previously it was all on this side of the shop and it was kind of annoying. So it's quite nice to have air on this corner of the workshop. This is something that I have needed in the shop for a very long time, my own little bar fridge. Now it won't be filled with sugary drinks. It'll be filled with nice luscious cold water because that is what I forget to drink when I'm working. So I'm gonna top that thing full to the brim with water and I'll stay nice and hydrated when I'm working in the shed now. Decided to put the compressor over this side. It was over that side. Um, once again, just keeping that uh, air over on this side and it's nice and tucked away there. And I quite like it under there. Eventually I'll move that outside. We'll get a bit of storage back under there. Now this is my mini toolbox. I bought this literally just for wiring. I think it's a great idea because I can wheel this over to a car when I'm doing wiring. It's got plugs wires on top, it's got little fuse holders down the bottom. It's literally got everything you need to wire anything into a car. So you just pull that out to the door of a car, just saves me running back to the toolbox all the time. And I actually really, really love that idea. Behind that is my mini uh, press. I don't think you can see it, but I've got a little press and just some spotlights that are under there. And I've also got some transmission oil under there, but uh, yeah, not too much going on behind that. Now we all know Big Red, I've had this toolbox for a while. It is uh, the centerpiece of the shed. I bought it when we moved into the house. I love this thing. It's from Maxim, if anyone's curious. Uh, definitely not sponsored, but I just bought it. It's been a great box, so definitely recommend checking them out if you're looking for one. It's quite big, but I've managed to get the top of my box back because we built this wall of Roby One Plus. So that is uh, awesome. I get to finally use the top for what it's kind of designed for, just storage and sitting stuff on top. Uh, but yeah, at the moment, there's just a few torches and whatnot charging. So it's quite nice to just have a charging station. I've still got a lot of cleaning to do, by the way. Nothing's really been wiped down or anything yet, but we'll get there eventually. Over here is gonna be my mini little workstation. I quite like this. This is gonna be for smaller projects. If I was pulling apart like a diff or something, I'd probably like to do it over here, even though I need the big vice, but um, this is just gonna be like a meticulous sort of area. It's nice, big, wide workbench, um, timber top, so it's not gonna scratch anything. And yeah, just heaps of parts, containers, ready to strip something down. Got all my battery tools. This Roby link wall plus kit thing is awesome. Just organizes everything. I really love being organized. Um, over there, just miscellaneous nuts and bolts. Actually, my Nana bought me this. Big shouts to Nan for uh, getting me that. And yeah, up there is like a glove holder, but just got more parts containers, 
And then one more link plus kit just to store all the uh, odds and ends, you know, blower, whipper snipper, got some leads, level, you know, stuff like that. And then one more PowerPoint here. So I decided just to, you know, charge some of the stuff that is annoying to charge. We've got the VMS, uh, got my handheld GME charger up there. And that is pretty much all of the shed, guys. Just got the aircon, some miscellaneous stuff that I need to either sell or store somewhere else. Oh, and of course, we've got the pressure cleaner corner. So I've got my little crayons, little pressure cleaner. Things are beast. And just all my soaps and whatnot on a nice little shelf as well, painted black. All these uh, bits of timber are from Bunnings. You just buy the pre-oiled bits of timber, cut them up to size. These brackets are like $4 each. You can make yourself a little shelf. I've got one there, one up there, and one over there. So for the price of like... I don't know, maybe less than a hundred bucks. I've got three really solid shelves. So yeah, that is the shed. I am loving it so far. I really like the walls. Kind of wish we did the red stripe, but you know, I could always go back and do a bit of a red stripe or we can just do some red feature stuff or maybe hang some banners or something like that. I think that'd be pretty cool. I do have my little red LED strip on under there. Can't really see it at the moment because there's a white right above it. But I think uh, a few more little red accents and I'll be really happy with how this sits. It's looking a lot better than what it was and it feels a lot better. Probably sounds a lot better. Let me know if you can hear a difference in the sound. But yeah, I'm gonna cut the video here, guys. I do have to get ready for a full drive trip I've got coming up in just three days. So I've got to pack for that. Um, I'm gonna do that now. I'm gonna bring the GQ in here as well, get that out of the weather because we've got some bad weather coming. Uh, but yeah, shed is pretty much done. What we'll do uh, in the next shed episode is uh, install the aircon got some more storage ideas clean up a bit more and we're going to start on the gq project when i get back it's going to be great but yeah that is the uh shed i think that is awesome let me know in the comments uh what you think and the last shed video is doing really well so thank you so much for watching if you are new to the channel please consider subscribing if you like this sort of content uh but if not i shall probably see you again hopefully great cheers for watching we'll see you on the next episode goodbye